Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Tad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. Today, I wanted to keep it simple. I had someone in class ask me, who had never done Scrum or Agile before, uh, when I jokingly said it was the Scrum and Agile, she believed me. Uh, <laughs> I should never do that joke. But she said, uh, tell me, Lee, she says, if you had to simplify this and break it down, she says, I know there are three roles because I've read the Scrum Guide, so good for her for that. She said, uh, how would you simplify or simply explain the three roles to someone who's never engaged or never understood what they were or never applied those before? So I I sat and thought about it and I said, I need to think of a good analogy for each of these roles to help people understand. So I started with, you know, the the team is responsible for how the work's being produced. The product owner is responsible for what's being produced. And the Scrum Master is kind of responsible for understanding and making sure the team understands why it's being produced and when it needs to be done by to help them, you know, achieve organizational delivery. Now, that's a weak, weak definition. I just want to throw that out there. So I want to take you a little further. When I think of a Scrum Master, the first thing that comes to my mind is a doctor. Because what a Scrum Master does is they diagnose symptoms. They they simply listen for symptoms. They... uh, they listen to all the symptoms, they, they analyze those, and they triage, and they make a diagnosis. And then once they make a diagnosis, this is where it gets interesting, they then have two options. They can either write a prescription, or they can treat the problem. Now, more often than not, my hope is that the Scrum Master will write a prescription, because the only way the team's ever going to learn not to encounter those same problems again is by addressing those problems as a team. But all too often, I see the Scrum Master just jump in and say, hey, I got it. And the Scrum Master will take care of all the problems, all the questions, all the concerns themselves. And a team keeps falling into the same pattern of pitfalls. So I compare this to if you went to the doctor and uh, the doctor asked you a bunch of questions, you know, listened to you, made a diagnosis and wrote a prescription. But instead of handing you the prescription, they invited you to go down to their car. They drove you to the pharmacy. They met with the pharmacist, they had a consult, they got the right prescription, the right dosage, everything. Uh, The doctor paid for it, drove you to your house, poured you a glass of water, helped you inside, poured you a glass of water, you know, made sure you put the pills in your mouth, poured the water in your mouth, uh, you know, made sure you swallowed, swapped your mouth after to make sure that you swallowed the pill, and then came back every so many hours as directed to make sure you did it every single time with that same order. That's not what a scrum master does. A scrum master should be making sure the prescription is in your hands, but then it's your responsibility to take the prescription as prescribed and to do the things that you need to do in order to get back to full health. If the Scrum Master does it all for you, well, then you never have an opportunity to learn and grow, and you never have an opportunity to become better at Agile. So for me, I think one of the big big key takeaways with a Scrum Master is not only they're responsible for making sure the process or framework is flowing well, but they're also responsible for making sure that they help the team remove impediments that they can remove. And if they do encounter an impediment they can't remove, this is where the doctor steps in and takes charge. Now, what's interesting is uh, the same analogy going with the doctor. If you walked into the doctor's office and said you were having severe abdominal pain and the doctor said, oh, your pancreas has burst, you know, your appendix is ruptured, (laughs) you know, uh, then they they wouldn't be writing your prescription. They'd be saying, meet me at the hospital. We're going to go into surgery, right? So I think it's one of those things where the doctor has to understand and know and have knowledge of what could go wrong and when it's best to engage the team to solve those problems and when it's better for the team to, you know, who, who can't solve the problems to, to go ahead and step in and do the solutioning for them. So there's power in both ways, but I think the Scrum Master is a lot like a doctor in that sense. Uh, the trick isn't to solve everything for the team or to make them reliant on a scrum master. The trick is to provide them with the information they need so that they can successfully complete things without being reliant on a scrum master. When it comes to the product owner, I often compare the product owner to a major league baseball catcher. The only difference is this catcher is catching balls from everywhere. Every stakeholder, every single person who's involved has balls and they're throwing them at the, at the product owner all at the same time. And a product owner is responsible for standing at the top of that funnel and catching those balls and then analyzing each one to see whether the ball should stay in play, whether something has to be done immediately with that ball, or whether the ball goes into a queue to be uh, used and built when time comes. So for me, when I think of a product owner, I love the analogy of having to inspect every ball 
and decide whether it's something to queue up or something that can wait and to measure value and to look for a visible damage on the ball. I mean, I think that's important. So if you think about how a major league baseball catcher operates, it makes sense that they would analyze each ball and figure out what balls need to stay in play and what balls could be tossed to the wayside because that is how they are going to better manage their backlog. And sometimes if they don't know, it's through refinement or grooming or through the voice of the umpire that they know you know, which balls to keep and which balls to toss. So I think it's important for the product owner to only have a limited set of stakeholders or a limited set of projects in motion, i.e. limited whip, work in progress, so that they can control the number of balls coming their way from different directions so that they can be better at standing at the top of that funnel and catching those balls as they come in so they can make active decisions about whether it's something that we need to drop everything and address or whether it's something that we address in the next sprint or whether it's something we queue up to address in a future sprint or maybe even a future release, right? Okay, last but not least, we have the team. Now, when I think of the team, I like to think of a team that's pulling tug-of-war, right? Now, I know tug-of-war is not a popular sport in many countries, but tug-of-war, two teams line up against each other. They're holding a rope, and they're pulling the rope, trying to successfully get the other team off balance and pull them into the pit of mud there in the middle. Uh, Unless you watch squid games, then it's a lot more deadly. But uh, (laughs) the point I'm trying to make is tug-of-war is interesting because The team dedicates their focus to doing the job at hand. They all work together and pull towards a common goal. They tend to understand each other better and have uh, frequent communications. And uh, it's interesting because they're all so close together and they're all holding on the same rope, but they're all pulling in the same direction. It's almost as though they have nothing that can stop them from achieving their goal, except for the team on the other side. So it's a battle of both strength and stamina. But the thing that I like to point out is, although we're asking them to provide bursts of energy to pull the other team off balance, it's not a constant pull because if it were, uh, you know, they would become fatigued very quickly and the other team would easily win. So it's one of these things where you have to be consistent, but it's also important for you to have those bursts of energy when you need them. So you don't want to uh, wear down a team or wear out the team. You know, there, there are lots of times where the team could you know, uh, do, do so much work. You can't, you can't constantly ask the team to continuously pull harder and harder and harder and harder. It's just, it doesn't even sound logical when you think about it. The team can only do so much and it's our responsibility to make sure we understand what the team can do and make sure that they're staying within their boundaries at their threshold. So the scrum master serves the scrum team and the organization and helps them understand all the theory, rules, values, practices, etc. And they help the team members identify and remove impediments. The product owner owns the product, optimizes the value of the product, and manages a product backlog. This person then helps team members collaborate with stakeholders directly and create a vision aligned with the stakeholder needs so that we have a good understanding and can set clear sprint and product goals. The scrum team owns the work and they actually do the work. So they're the doers. Uh, And that could be anything from technical to non-technical. Designers, developers, DBAs, architects, greeting card writers, world championship wrestlers, doesn't matter who it is. If they're getting their hands dirty doing the work, they're part of that team. And I think it's just so critical to make sure we understand who the team is because they're responsible for the quality of the work they produce and they're responsible for helping organize the work they do. So that makes sense and we can avoid duplicity and do things the right way. Uh, So that'll do it. If you're new to Scrum or if you're not new to Scrum, hopefully this was just a tidbit of information that'll help you along your journey. If you have a subject that you'd like to speak about on a daily stand-up, feel free to email us at learnmore@agiledad.com. We'd love to hear about your topic so we can get it in the queue. As always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.